Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. This is our 12th and final video for the Depression and Anxiety series. I hope that it has blessed you. I hope that you're um, thinking about it in a new ways and that you're more equipped to be able to go through the spiritual battle that's happening behind the scenes when dealing with depression and anxiety. So today we're talking about that victory and understanding that victory belongs to you when you are a child of the Lord. So let's pray. God, we praise you and thank you that that victory is already written in the books. It's already planned. It's orchestrated by you. We know we've not arrived there yet, but Lord, you have that victory sealed in your heart. And Lord, as we move forward, we need to remember our identity in you, remember our spiritual armor, remember that our hope lies in you, remember that the only righteous fear is that um, reverential fear of where we approach you with awe. Lord, as we go forward, help us to change our mindset. Help us to be focused on you and only on you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the whole key to this victory in this spiritual battle with depression and anxiety is to understand that that victory is yours. God has already sealed that victory. And when you stay focused on him, the more focused you on him you are, the more victory you will have. So we're starting off today in Romans chapter 8, verse 22. And this is where it's talking about the trials and the, the difficult things that this world has gone through, but yet the victory is sealed. And it says, we know that the whole creation, creation has, creation, the whole crea creation has been groaning as in the child, pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but our, we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship the redemption of our bodies. So we know that Christ is coming back. We know we can look forward to that. We know that we have salvation, but yet we still go through hard things. We still go through difficult times. And that does not, it's not that we won't have any difficult times. It's that when we're focused on Christ, our mindset is eternally focused. Our mindset is on our salvation. Our mindset is on growing in our relationship with Christ. Verse 24, for we, in this hope we have, we were saved, but hope is, is seen, that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. So we're patiently waiting for Christ to come back. We're patiently waiting for that moment where we're in heaven and we're praising God forever. But in the meantime, we can be faithful servants here on earth. Verse 26, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness as we're going through this weak part time in our life. The Spirit is there helping you. And we may not know what we ought to pay, pray for. That's the next part of this verse. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. When we pray in the Spirit, we have those wordless groans. We end up speaking in a language that we don't even understand. The Holy Spirit is literally praying exactly what needs to be prayed for. And you can have your faith and hope in that. You can praise God for the fact that he took over where you were weak. Verse 27, And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So that Spirit is interceding for you. All God is completely behind you. He's wrapped around you through this whole tr difficult trial. Verse 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. It's very possible that your struggle with depression and anxiety may be a part of your calling. You may end up being able to help someone else that's struggling with it as you are struggling with it and you end up helping each other through it together. You've got to be aware that that victory is already sealed. God has already written that story for you and you know that that victory is coming. You keep focused on Christ. In John 16, verse 25, it says, 
This is Jesus speaking. Though I have spoken figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about, that fa about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. When you pray in Jesus' name, he is not asking the Father on your behalf. In fact, when we get to verse 27, we understand it better. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. So it's because of your relationship with Christ, because you put your faith and trust in Christ, that you have that direct channel to God the Father. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to ask to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. God knows all things. He knows what you're struggling with. Pour your heart out to him. Don't hold back on that. Verse 31. Do you now believe? Jesus replied. A time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. Even when you feel like you are all alone, you've got to remember that the Father is with you. You've got to remember that you've got your relationship with Christ. Verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome this struggle that you're having with depression and anxiety. And as we look further, we will see that we do not need to give up. We do not need to feel like it's overwhelming us because God's got this under control. In Hebrews 12, 12, now in Hebrews 11, they just went through this whole list of all these people who were commended for their faithfulness. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, that's these people that had faith in God and their, their promise came true, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So we're running this race. What is this race all about? And we get to verse 2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. We are fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ. That's what that race is all about. That's what you're running towards. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He had joy in knowing that he was going to the cross because he knew what it would accomplishment, accomplish and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who so endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Your victory is sealed. It's right here in God's word. Praise him for the fact that that victory is coming. As you go into your prayer closet, pour your heart out to him and praise him for that victory. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I know I have, and I hope that it's dynamically changed the way you see depression and anxiety. Have a wonderful evening. God bless and keep walking the walk.